Do I hire an architect? Do I get a contractor? Do I talk to the bank? Do I call my mother? That's exactly the feeling that most of my clients have when they call me. They don't know where to start with the renovation, with the remodel, with the new construction. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I do it, how I recommend my clients do it, and hopefully you can make a decision for yourself because there's no right way to get to the top. You've just gotta find your own path to start your journey to the perfect house. You get the whole Sherpa thing? I love a theme. First things first. First of all, you gotta make sure the money is in order. So I would check with the bank or check my finances. And at this point, I'm not setting a budget because there's too many unknowns, but I wanna know how much money I might have access to. I also wanna know what's going on in my local area. If you live in a co-op or a development or a community where there are restrictions or limitations on what you can build, you wanna have those before you start because you don't wanna start something that you can't do. The difference between good design and bad design, time, money, creativity, and location doesn't hurt either. When we built our first home, I knew that I could not keep up with my clients as far as spending went. But as far as time goes and creativity, those are two areas that you can compete with the best interior designers and architects out there. Go out there and find out what you like. Go to open houses, go to construction sites. You wanna run through everything that's important to you before you go to an architect or a designer. When you have that information, you will come to them with a better understanding of what you expect from them. And remember, you're paying them, so you expect from them to get what you ask. In my next video, I'm gonna walk you through my self-evaluation intake form for clients. And basically it walks through everything in your house, your routines, your habits, your lifestyle, your quirks, all of the details that make your house a home. Because good design starts on the inside, bad design goes everywhere else. Now that you know your goals for the property, check with a realtor, check on Zillow with Alex, and find out what the value is of the houses around you. Go to open houses. See what people are doing in your neighborhood. See if you're going to get your investment back out. I believe it is just as important to design a chicken coop as it is to design a cathedral. An architect draws up your plans. They get, they pull the permits, which means they get permission to build. And sometimes they'll do controlled inspections, which means they'll come out and they'll check that things are going along as they say they're supposed to be in the plans. For a regular person like me, that's it. I pay them once and they're gone. At the beginning of the process, I never see them again. Now in high-end projects, architects are typically on for the entire process and they'll, they'll manage the project. They have interior designers and lighting and closet people and organizers and all of that stuff. But for most of us, an architect's gonna come in and draw plans and hope that they design a house that's not gonna get them sued. End of story. Contractor's gonna build you a house based on the plans, based on the materials written in the plans. End of story. If you want more than that, you pay more. Some contractors, some big developers will have material specialists, kitchen and bath people. That's usually larger budgets or larger projects. For most of us that are not building a million, two million and beyond, we're not gonna get those kinds of services. That falls on either a designer or you should be first. Typically, a designer isn't in most people's budget or so they think, but I beg to differ. If you have the money to buy, one kitchen cabinet box then you have the money to hire an interior designer at least for an hour it's good to have an extra set of eyes someone to look at it give you feedback now i'm not talking about a decorate i'm talking about a designer oh that's an added expense i've already hired an architect they laid out the house for me i got a contractor he's great he's got a good eye he knows everything a designer will make the process easier a designer has been through it they know what to look for they know how to manage the mansplaining that goes on on a job, and they know how to fight for your rights, how to fight for those extras that are gonna make your house special. I think it's money well spent. I know the look. I come walking up the steps and all I can see is that lady's gonna cost me money. Not true. A designer will save you money, plain and simple. The average change on a construction site, on your home, for you to change your mind is $5,000. So I know that if I catch one mistake, that I saved you and now I'm gravy. You wanna find a designer like that. You wanna find a friend like that. You wanna find someone who's going to be the thorn in all those other people's side and be your advocate. Because at the end of the day, the designer's job is to make sure that you're happy. Not that they're altruistic. They're not better people than the contractor or the architect, but that is their job. They're the ones that see your vision and are gonna see it through to the end. So I think it's really important to have a designer. If you can't find someone to work with, you need to be your best designer and you are the most qualified. You know the house, 
You know your family, you know your needs and wants. Those are the most important factors in getting your home designed properly. I would start talking to contractors, interview, get some prices, get some numbers in your head because contractors tend to be a little bit more realistic than architects. Architects, they draw on paper and so there is no value when they erase a wall. But when a contractor erases a wall, it might be five grand. So you wanna know those kinds of things. Interview them, get to know them. This is gonna be somebody that's in your life for a long time. You wanna make sure that it's someone you can communicate with, that you feel comfortable with, and that listens to you and can explain to you in terms that you understand because there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you don't understand. This isn't your business, you're not supposed to. So you want someone that can communicate with you and that can work with the kind of person that you are. Now, once you start talking to contractors, you can get a feel for what things cost. They might have good ideas. They've seen a lot more projects than you have. If you want numbers from a contractor, you've got to have finalized plans and materials because otherwise it's very difficult for them to give you an accurate number of what things cost. So that's why I say budgeting till after I talk to the contractors and then I work out a budget. That's where you got to go back to the architect. Now you've talked to the contractor, you've talked to the designer in your head or, or you found a designer. And when you talk to contractors and architects, the more specific you can be, the better. Go in there with a spreadsheet, give them the name, the model number, whatever information you know is going in your house. It's one less thing we have to think about. We put it on the list, it's done. You have to do your homework. There's a lot of homework involved in building a house. It is work, but it is work that is so worth it in the end.